In this video, I'm gonna be discussing how I installed the Hoy Miles microinverters on my new solar carport. If you're interested in seeing a video on the install of the carport or the Hoy Miles combiner box, I'll have both those videos linked in the description below and at the end of this video. And very briefly, I wanna talk about the microinverters because they come in different versions, a single microinverter, the dual microinverter, which we have here, and the quad microinverter. I've done a full video on the differences between them. You can check that out. I'll go ahead and add that in the link description as well, because if you're looking at this system, you want to know as much as possible about it. And I have covered Hoy Miles for the last year and a half, two years. So I got a lot of information to share with you guys on it. And I hope that you find it viable, but I don't want to spend too much time on this other than they do have the single, dual and quad, and they come in different ratings. We have the HMS 1000, and you'll notice there that it can output 958 watts, which means you can get 479 watts out of this side, 479 watts peak out of this side. So there is a clear reason why I've chosen to go with Hoy Miles on a microinverter is simply because of the production out of the microinverter. There's nothing that comes close to these uh, microinverters that are on the market that I know of. So anyway, without further ado, I do want to go ahead and start the video, show you the complete process from start to finish on how I installed these on my carport. by code in my area this needs to be at least 18 inches deep at the top of the conduit so when i lay this conduit in you take a measure from the top of the conduit to the top of this trench line and it should be 18 inches but i rented a 36 inch trencher i'm getting ready to put the conduit together get that laid in and then later we'll pull the wire through the conduit And what I have here is over 3,200 feet of wire. So I have a thousand foot in this red, in this black, and in this green, and over 250 feet in this larger uh, ground wire. So let's talk about why I got so much wire. It's because I'm running four branches from my solar array over to my combiner box. And we have a run a little bit over 200 foot for each one of those. I think it's 180 actually. Somewhere 180 and you got to do some lifts here and there. So we need some excess. So I need at least 200 foot, 220 foot for excess to work with that. So I'm going to cut these into 250 foot each. And we're going to have basically 13 wires running through the conduit. That's going to be a hard pull to pull through that. So I'm not even gonna bore you with that. I'm just gonna get this in the conduit and then we'll check back in later. But let me explain. I'm using 10 gauge wire running from each branch or each circuit that I'm creating on the array. So I'm gonna have four branches. Each one of those is gonna have 10 gauge wire running that stretch to the combiner box. Um, some might get confused why I have so much grounding wire. So we have this ground wire goes directly to the branch. So each microinverter has a, a ground wire that comes out and that has to run over to your combiner box. This is an equipment ground for grounding your solar array. And this is an expensive wire, but it's required. And this is one of the things you get into when you set your solar array so far from your combiner box. And I have to set my combiner box where I'm setting it. And I'm probably gonna mention that several times because it has to be within six foot of the main service disconnect. So that's why that sir, um, combiner box is gonna be where it's at. And the solar array is out where it's at because that's the only place 
that I wanted it on the property. And that's the closest I can get it, you know, as far as to the combiner box. So that's why it's a lot of wire. This is a lot of money because it's a lot of copper. So let's get it in the conduit and go from there. And you'll see what I'm doing in just a second, but I think, it, oh yeah, it's gonna be perfect. The challenge that I've been presented with is this back plate that has to go in here. But when I put it in, I can't put this through the back for it to still work because this has to come up here like that. And I'm gonna have to do something about these edges, but I just kind of giving you an idea of what I'm doing here. And I'm going to make that hole just a little bit thicker in a second. But now that we have it like this, I could put a bushing on, which is going to, you have to have the, the nut back up to hold it in there, but that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm going for. So now that I got the bushing in, I could come in and put my den rail in and I also have to have a grounding bar that I have to attach this back plate. Uh, if I didn't have the back plate, when I put the den rail in, then it's gonna put bolts through the back side of the box and we can't have that. It's all your electric's gonna be coming in from your solar panels and then it's gonna be going out to your combiner box here. So. I gotta create a solution to where I can come in from the back side without this being in my way. Okay, I got this thing very smooth. You can run your finger, you can put a lot of pressure and come down on it. There is no way that's gonna cut a wire whatsoever now. So I took a file on it and then I sanded it down and then I beveled the edges. Yes, this is circuit one.
that's why I do it like this. I guess everybody might have their own techniques, but works out perfectly for me. See how they're folded over now. If I do that without it, I would show y'all, but I may have to cut my wire and I don't want to cut it short. So you just have to take my word for it. But that's why I do it that way. Red, and you watch that little clip that clips in so it doesn't push through, right? This time the green in the middle. <laughs> okay, clip. And then the black on this side. So there's what that looks like. Work it in. Oh, there we go. All right, sweet. They went in a lot easier than the first one. So we'll keep up with that method. And then I'll have to come back and glue this. I'll pull this out, put some glue right here so it can't turn, can't get water in. And then we'll push it up here and get it all sealed up so that way this can't come loose. But for right now, I'm just gonna tuck these back up here and get the rest of them connected. The connection for this end is one of these connectors. So I'm just gonna slide this right in the spot, clip it in. Then we'll take our wire or our cable that's pre-designed for this system. And you can get these from Hoya Miles as well. They're already um, pre-set up. This is an NA10300. This is why I love these new HMS connectors. Click and go. Man, that speeds up the process. Oh, and let's say you're up here on a ladder and you need to disconnect them. Well, that's no problem because they've made this really simple to take off. Bam. Then the micro inverter into this one. And then we'll put a water seal cap over this one for the end cap. And I'm going to turn it like this. I'll kind of tuck them in behind that there. Make sure the screw can't damage your wiring and it can't move. I'll zip tie everything up. But that's what that final end microverter will look like. I'll come back and put that cap on there though. Man, they just made it so simple. So just like this, right in the spot. And to hook the microinverter up, click it into the T, grab your cable. Which side do you want it to go to? So our cable is gonna go up here like this and connect those two microinverters together. You can't get it wrong. Just find which one you wanna use, which end. Slide it in the spot. Kick it that way. This cable will end up coming back and connecting into this right here. And this cap right here is the one you want to use for your ends. It's nice and sealed. I'm just going to tuck it in behind that microinverter. Look at here. Just a couple days in. This is why you have to absolutely put bird mesh on it because they're already building nests. You see it down there as well. These birds have built in here. And this process is still in the works. So I'm not 100% complete with this. I still gotta come back and put the bird mesh in and tidy up the wires on the microinverters. But this is what the underneath of the solar carport looks like with all the microinverters installed and they're actually turned on. And in case you're wondering, these solar panels are 415 watts by Sirius Solar and they are sold from Signature Solar. I'll leave a link in the description below for those as well. But so far they're performing perfectly with these microinverters. And even on a cloudy day, I've seen them produce up to 10 kilowatts. So that is 
just at the max, a little bit over the max of what the solar panels are rated for STC. So it's definitely getting some bifacial gain on that, but I'm not seeing any clipping in the microinverters themselves, which makes me extremely happy because in my old system that was up here on top of my shop, it clipped all the time with the microinverters that I had installed with it. And those are 370 watt panels, not even 415 watts, nor are they uh, bifacial gain on those. So out of the gate, I'm extremely happy with this system. And I'm gonna share more data with you guys as we go forward, because I wanna talk about the carport and how it's actually performing, the solar panels and how they're performing paired with these Hoy Miles micro inverters. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, be sure to subscribe to the channel, tap that little notification bell. So when I put out videos like that, you get notified. I hope to catch you in my next one. And right now, it looks like it's producing right around 9.2 kilowatts, 9.4 kilowatts, 9.5, 9.6, 9 9.8. That's actually pushing right at the maximum of those uh, STC rating of the panels. That's the total 9.7 kilowatts right now. And we've got a very cloudy day going on. So that's really nice.